So, uh, you know, I got a lot of pushback when I said the Steelers may be undefeated, but I don't think they're very good. I got equal pushback when I said the Chiefs are the most talented team in the league, but I don't think they're playing particularly well, and they're not the best team in the league right now. Buffalo is. Uh, Green Bay looks like they could give them a run for their money. I had the Chiefs third on the herd hierarchy, a respectful third, a very respectful third, a nuanced third. Your thoughts on where I put them, Nick? Yeah, I... You don't do the herd hierarchy for basketball. You don't do something just like that every week. But if you did, I would wonder two years ago where you would have had the 2018 Warriors. When everyone knew they were the best team, everyone knew they had the best collection of talent, and everyone deep down knew they were going to win the title, but they didn't take the regular season that seriously, and so at some points they looked beatable. Now, that Warriors team happened to finish, I think, with the third best record in basketball. The Chiefs are going to be 15-1. and one. Like, this, <laughs> this is the thing that I don't understand All right. about your rankings. Mike Florio doesn't have the Chiefs won anymore. A bunch of folks are like, you know what? The Chiefs, who happen to have the longest winning streak in the sport to go along with the best player in the sport, arguably the best coach in the sport, and won the Super Bowl last year, they're like, eh, not winning by enough points. Is that supposed to hurt them when the committee gets together to decide who makes the playoffs because <laughs> of strength of schedule? Oh, wait, that's college football. So, yeah, you're wrong. I think deep down you know you're wrong. They're clearly the team everyone is chasing, and we're going to see that here starting in a couple weeks. That's well, what I would say, Well, but that's just me. Now, I said I would vote Aaron Rodgers MVP because I do think Kansas City could be a 7-9, oh. 8-8 eight eight team without Mahomes. I think Eric Green Bay would be a mess. But I said this week I moved Josh Allen ahead of Mahomes in two. And the reason I did is, in my lifetime, Belichick's worst month and Sean Payton's worst month are September. We have never in the NFL cared about September. Like in the NBA, we don't care about December. And in the end, the last seven to eight weeks, Josh Allen's a better quarterback. Last four, he's a much better quarterback. So I put Josh Allen behind Aaron, Mahomes' third MVP. I'm sure that rubbed you the wrong way. All right, listen, I'm going to reveal something to the audience. <laughs> and I don't even know if you remember this, Colin. Okay, okay. Uh, sometime in the last week, Colin Cowherd and I were on the phone together. And in passing, Colin re referenced me in a story he was telling someone else about me as, quote, my best friend, Nick Wright. And I don't even think Colin remembers that, but mm. it happened. I promise. I know because it was so touching to me. I went and told my wife. I said, Cowherd referred to me as his best friend. And then I saw this, and I'm like, you know what? I don't even like him anymore. Don't even care. Like, <laughs> it means nothing to me anymore. You're going to say Mahomes is third? He's third in the MVP voting. Okay, so on one hand, you have the guy who everyone knows is the best player in the league. It's first, second, or third in every passing category, and his team's 15-1. and one. That's one hand. And the other hand, wait, the other hand's empty because no other hand matters. He should win the MVP. What we're going to do... To Patrick Mahomes, and I'll give my co-host Kevin Wilds credit, who's been saying this, this is going to be Carl Malone in 1997. It's going to be, well, we know who the best player in basketball is. We know who the best team is. We know who's going to win the title. But it would be fun to give it to someone else, and all of a sudden you have an MVP award. You're like, wait, what? And the fact that you're saying he wouldn't even finish second, at least the Rodgers thing, they're going to be the number one seed in the NFC, most likely. Mahomes should be the MVP. If Rodgers wins it, so be it. If he finishes behind Josh Allen, I, I think Bill Barr's got time on his hands. I demand a special counsel. I demand there to be a full investigation if Josh Allen finishes ahead of Patrick Mahomes for MVP. Bill Barr will have some time on his hands, I think. Okay, yeah. so there are teams. Yeah. That we know there's four or five teams that can win the Super Bowl. You know, Kansas City's obviously among them. Green Bay. I mean, there's, there's a handful. Uh, I like Seattle Saints. I think they're really good teams. I, I like Buffalo. And then there's teams that, you know, I think can win a playoff game. But there always is a team or two. And I think Chicago, I would put this in, they may make the playoffs. That's not, they're not going to win a playoff game. And I don't think they're going to beat Green Bay this week, so they're not getting in. The question Agreed. is Cleveland. I saw them go through a dry spell middle of the season. I saw them last week. And I look at them and I think, I don't know. Uh, for Coach Stefanski, first time in the playoffs. I don't trust Baker. Can they win a playoff game, not just get in Cleveland? Oh, I think they absolutely can win a playoff game. I think the matchup would be very telling in that. 
I think it could, they, they might end up getting Pittsburgh, who they're playing this week, but they're playing against Mason Rudolph. They might end up getting Indy. In, in, you know, the AFC is really weird right now. Tennessee arguably is the third best team. Tennessee also could miss the playoffs entirely if this week doesn't go right for him and yeah. Houston beats them. Yeah. So here is, here's why I think the, this week is incredibly important to the Browns. If before the year we would have told you the Browns are going to go 10 and 6 but miss the playoffs, I think you'd say, hey, that's a step in the right direction, double digit win season, Baker bounce back, all of it. But if 10 days ago when they were 10 and 4 with the Jets coming up, we're going to say they finished 10 and 6 and missed the playoffs, it's a disaster. So I think they've got to win this weekend against Mason Rudolph get to the postseason. I do think they could be dangerous because they run the ball so well. Miles Garrett can wreck a game. And when Baker is clicking, when the play action passing is clicking, that offense really cooks. Yeah. But even if they get there and lose, I think it's useful. Just like, to be fair here, to your, for your beloved adopted Buffalo Bills, I think the experience of getting to the playoffs and losing last year was helpful for him. Like, Sean McDermott understood some of the mistakes he made. Josh Allen's probably like, I probably shouldn't throw over the head backwards laterals <laughs> in the postseason. Take that out of the playbook. So, like, you can learn even if you fail in the first round of the playoffs. So, I think it's a success for Cleveland as long as they get there. I want to end with a basketball topic. Uh, I, I don't know if you heard uh, my elegant open, but I said – it is interesting how LeBron and Brady have uh, a much more linear, refined career, better teammates, but they're both very aspirational, and they're not as beloved as far of an MJ that had teammate issues, coaching issues, didn't very rocky, a lot of potholes. But MJ and Favre tended to, in their marketing, play to the middle America. I'm jeans and hot dogs. And LeBron and Brady Relatable. are very, very, yeah. And I don't think LeBron and Brady are like, no, I, I don't even have to work out with my own team. I'm going to open TB12. I'm going to have my own clinic. Which, so I, your, yeah. th your thought when I say LeBron is more Brady and MJ is more Favre, is that fair? No, I think that's, I think that's absolutely right. I think that th there is an element of relatability that the most beloved, super famous, rich people have, even if it's all fake. And I'm not saying it is or it isn't fake, but I'm saying, the, the, and you brought up the politicians line, we've got a lot of very successful politicians in America right now who rail against coastal elites, but they went to Yale, and they went to Harvard, <laughs> and they went to Oxford, but they are attempting to be relatable to what they think their constituency is. I don't think it has ever mattered to Brady to be relatable to anyone other than his teammates. And I think to his credit, when you listen to his teammates, they will say he actually goes out of his way to try to be relatable to them, to go introduce himself to the new receivers, even if they obviously know who he is, and to be a great teammate. And I think for LeBron, I do think LeBron is relatable in far as how he talks about his story and coming from nothing to where he is now and opening the school and doing those things. But there is nothing about his professional life that is relatable to really anyone. And I don't think he tries to fake that. And so I, I agree with that. I also think that those guys are polarizing because they threaten the nostalgia of other of of older generations and their greats. So at once upon a time, before, Brady is clearly past Montana, but when they both had four Super Bowls, folks were threatened by Brady. I believe LeBron is clearly past Jordan, but it's more of a debate than Brady-Montana. So he has more people that want to pull him down. I don't think people are arguing Brett Favre's the greatest quarterback ever. He's just like the greatest quarterback that you want to go you know, have a beer with ever. And I think people will always like that. And I think that hurts Rodgers. I know you weren't talking about Rodgers, but Rodgers is not as relatable as far. Rodgers is more aloof and all those things. Also, I find it amazing that the two greatest athletes of my life have the same birthday, LeBron and Tiger Woods. Like, I, kn I know maybe that's not that weird, but it is weird to me. The two greatest athletes, arguably, ever in American history are both born on December 30th. By the that's way. That's all. Just added that little nugget. In Joy, Joy Taylor, Tiger. what's your birthday? January 17th. That's my wife's birthday. And, and she and my wife are so similar how they view the world.
It's crazy. So my my and my work wife. The, and best my, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, the only two women who can tolerate you. Best I can tell. <laughs> so I mean, it might be a thing about January. You know, I'm taking that best friend thing back. I'm just take, I'm rescinding that yep. uh, that thing. No problem. All right, buddy. Okay. <laughs> Good seeing you, Nick. Right. See you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.